Matt, this is Ram with Better Tattooing. We had this actually happen in the shop by yesterday, the day before recording this. I kind of got a little bit grumpy. So let's talk about it together. Uh, let's talk about making opaque grays. Yeah, we have to do this. Anyways, all right. <laughs> All right, we're back making opaque grays. So I had many people <laughs> actually say this in the past, I don't know, a few years, where they don't, they don't understand that opaque gray is not just like an individual color, right? They're thinking like, if you go and you buy a bottle of opaque gray, right? Uh, that this is like its own special color. Like this is something that's just like red or yellow and it's not it is literally black and white mixed together so if you're out buying opaque gray sets and you're like this is the most amazing stuff look at the labels and start paying attention to what the numbers are right if you see something that has ci number on it somewhere on the bottle that is the color index number that is going to tell you what the raw pigment used in it is and some companies have this on their bottles some don't we actually don't know what's in the bottles because they're not required to actually put them on there in the United States, but what can you do? Uh, <laughs> there is regulations that I actually support. I hope that you do too. Um, go and check out the CI numbers, right? If you get like, you know, the black and the white, you're going to start seeing that's fine. And usually that's what it is, right? We're going to see our blacks, which is going to be, what is it? 77266, I think. And uh, our whites, which is going to be seven seven is it like two nine one well, I don't know I'm doing this off the of dome here um, those are going to be the main pigment additives and the other things you're probably gonna see are like something with an E or whatever and those are gonna be your surfactants or other additives but normally what we'll do when we're making a plate pig grays is we have our two pigments right this is our pigment mix and then we have our carrier, right? And the carrier is gonna be made up of all the other stuff that don't have CI numbers. So we have our carrier, which is usually going to be, I put that on the wrong side, didn't I? Whoopsie. Uh, uh, we're gonna have alcohol, which normally it's supposed to be, whoop. It's supposed to be uh, ethyl alcohol, but you'll see isopropyl being there as well, right? Uh, we should go ethyl, iso. Um, we'll have distilled water, uh, and then we have other stuff. Normally you'll have some type of thickening agent, like on average with most opaque grays, I prefer to use like vegetable glycerin, uh, if we're making them, glycerin, um, because black and white tend to separate really, really quickly if they don't have some type of binding agent in it. So. What you end up doing, if you're trying to make your own opaque grays, you can go out and buy some extra bottles and clean them, sterilize them, and you'll put these three things into just little squeezers, right? You'll dispense a few black. Oh, wait, we'll do one cap of black. And like, this is the class that we had done yesterday. And we'll do three caps of white, right? It's just white here, white, white, and this one's black. Go grab yourself a needle bar. We'll make sure that these are filled up about half to three quarter for the white. Black is all the way full. And what we'll do is we'll take our needle bar, loop end, and we'll dip it into here. And then we'll literally take it without shaking it off, put it into the white, and give it a spin. And when we start doing that, it's going to mix it, right? It's just like a little paddle mixer. Spin, 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 spin. Have paper towel, wipe it off. And continue to do that along these until you have your dark, your mid, and your light. So this is just pigment, right? Whatever brand that you want to use, I prefer to use stuff that doesn't have a lot of additives. So if it already has your alcohol and your distilled water in it, and it's just pigment, all you have to worry about is adding vegetable glycerin to thicken it up, right? If you're using raw pigments, you can do this, but just actually use like fill bottles on this where we're going to be having ratios mixed off of our initial black, which we can get into that another time. But I actually have a video, I think about it, which is on making gray washes, which you can do the same thing for making most pigments. Links there. Um, so, what we'll do is we'll find our tones in here. Now, if you tend to like leave it alone for a little bit, what happens is the pigment inside of the cap 
will end up separating, right? So we'll have what almost looks like streaks of one color overlaying a streak set of the other. If this is like black and white, which I mean, I can't do. Anyways, um, what you're gonna see is it doesn't seem like it's very mixed. And white specifically when it's mixed with stuff tends to like separate, um, especially white that's made with a titanium dioxide base. Uh, it's because those particles are really polar, right? They're, they're like, a, they experience electromagnetism and they're attracted a lot to themselves. Black is normally just carbon, it's just soot. So what happens is the black ends up kind of staying separated and loose and, you know, just on its own. And the white wants to clump together. When it does, it'll streak out things. Now, these particles are very, very, very small, but they still can move relatively quickly when attracted to each other inside of a substance. So we slow them down by using a thickening agent like vegetable glycerin, right? And I mean, you don't have to put a lot. If we find our tones that we like in here and we do that, we just take like literally vegetable glycerin and you'll put like a drop. You have a clean needle bar again and you'll stir it up just a little bit. Give it a spin. Take a look at it and you should see it set, mix, and not separate. That's because the vegetable glycerin is actually changing the, the construction of that water, right? It's making it thicker. So while these things are wanting to move quickly through it, it's now they're moving through molasses. It slows them down so they're less likely to separate and settle and move apart, which can you know extend the amount of time you can actually use one of these without having to mix it up, which is a very common problem when using opaque grays because they tend to separate in the caps if they don't have thickening agents. So vegetable glycerin, glycerin you have rosin in some companies, they'll use it. Um, whether it's hemp based or not, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but this is, this is the easiest way to make your opaque grays. If you're trying to do large scale stuff, go watch the, the video that we are pointing to again here um, about how to make your, your gray washes because you're doing the same thing. You're gonna be creating a gray and then you're mixing it down but instead of using distilled water, we're using white. As we're tipping off and we meet our final actual like you know, set of color that we want. We'll thicken it up with vegetable glycerin, throw a sterilized bead inside of it if you like to make sure that because white, white settles a lot when you store it for a while. And if you don't use a lot of opaque grays, they tend to settle. You gotta shake the shit out of that stuff to make sure that it's all set again. Uh, if you don't, you can sit there and shake it. Like yeah, Dermaglow used to have this red, it's killer red. I don't know if it's healthy or not, but it was this red, it was just fantastic. And they never put a bead in it and you would have to shake this gigantic bottle for like an hour just to get it to like mostly separate, be tapping it on stuff, everything else. If you didn't have extra beads or sterilizer to throw them in, it would take an entire day sometimes to break that stuff up. But when you did and you used it, it was just lightning in a bottle. I love that stuff. Um, don't use it anymore, don't know why, moved on. Um, but yeah, uh, that's, that's how you do it. Make sure that you're not adding too much as well because every time you go to add something new to your initial mixture, right, what you're doing is you're washing it out. So when we're doing vegetable glycerin, we're not gonna be making like a quarter of the bottle of vegetable glycerin, like I mean you can, but it's only gonna have so much of an effect on the actual thickness that we're gonna see with this. You don't need a lot to thicken it up. If you want to, you can use other things that have better thickening properties and why some tattoo pigments uh, mixers tend to use some like really heavy chemicals because it just you know, little anti foaming, anti this, anti you know traction, anti whatever uh, performance enhancers that make it so they never separate. They're trying to slow down that particle movement so it doesn't fall into things. It'll create a suspension where things stay put. But you don't have to worry about that. And if, as long as you're shaking it and you have a little bit of glycerin in there for the time that it takes you to do your tattoo, usually this stuff won't settle. You know for the first hour or two if you've made it correctly. Um, at the same time, if you are using opaque grays in a tattoo, dispense them when you need them. Change your gloves, you know, like just proper health and safety stuff. But don't let it sit for eight hours before you get into it and be like, I don't know why it's healing out poorly. It's healing out poorly because everything is separated in your cap. You've been running your machine and you're like shallow dipping and just getting basically a wash that you're trying to fill in with. Turn your machine off, use a foot switch, you know, I mean, it's like easiest way to do it or press a button, whatever you're gonna do. And deep dip, if you have let it set for a while. Deep dip, give it a little stir, pull out your eye loop and give it a stir by hand, you know? Put a little drop of water in the top or some alcohol from one of your bottles if it started to evaporate too much and get too thick. Make sure that that stuff is actually working the way that you want and go back in and try again, especially first pass if you see that you put in some grain. It just looks munched up. It's probably because it's not mixed up right. Anyways, I should have just said like everything about opaque grays. 
that's it. I know people are like, how do you put it in? It's a, it's an ink, like literally, as same as you pack black, you put in opaque grays the same way. If you're having trouble packing black, you're gonna have trouble packing opaque grays. If you have trouble packing opaque grays, pretty sure you have trouble packing black. That's how it goes. If you think that there's something different with it, I mean like, it, it's, not, it's not science. It isn't. You can do this by hand, right? Anyways, that's it. If you uh, like this, uh, subscribe, comment, I don't know, buy a hat, something like that. I feel better that we got all this out so that I can just ask people next time that they bring in a $120 black set with some gray, opaque grays attached to it. I can just be like, just go watch this, you know? You can make your own, you can save money. I mean, to get like two bottles of dynamic and like this mixing stuff would cost you like 42 bucks. You're gonna have to go and buy a one ounce bottle for, you know, set for 120. Just don't, save your money, you know? Instead of giving it to a big pigment company, give it to like some, you know, artist, buy their art, go buy a machine, you know, try something new that support local, you know? Anyways, that's my argument for today. Grr. <laughs> This is Ryan Bitter Tattoo and signing off.